Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. What could be worse than having somebody who's a good kid and, and lose them to something because they take something one time? A three-part long-term plan to reduce jail overcrowding, increase the resources available for addiction treatment, and save the taxpayers money. It's part of an ambitious plan laid out by Attorney General Wayne Stengem. Thank you for joining us tonight. Stengem is looking to become the next governor of North Dakota, and the June primary is just weeks away. Valley News Team's Bradford Airy questioned the Attorney General, asking him why this announcement is being made now and what it hopes to accomplish. Why this an announcement now? Be uh, you know, I think that there is an increased awareness among legislators and citizens that we cannot continue with the inexorable increase in the costs of incarceration and ever building more prisons. Stengem says in 2005, 1,329 inmates were locked up statewide. Last year, it was 1,751. And the costs for new correctional facilities and expansions went from $83 million to $178 million in a decade. Or we can address the fundamental issue for many of these people, which is that they're addicted to drugs, or alcohol. He says his plan would first address the shortage of licensed addiction counselors in the state, and the qualifications for that job include getting a college degree, then 1,400 hours in a clinical training program, references, and passing the license exam. Why didn't you do more in the past to stop this problem from well, happening? Well, we have done quite a bit, and of course, this is not something that is unique to the state of North Dakota. The whole nation is seeing a problem with the opioid epidemic. But what about those people who look at this problem and say, yes, we need more treatment centers, but not in my town. Remember West Fargo? A methadone clinic was going to open in 2014 until the city banned it, citing a lack of transparency with the company. In Fargo, for example, there is a shortage here and there is a need for more, but in the rural areas, the need is even more critical. The primary election in North Dakota takes place June 14th. Bradford Eric Valley News Live. Doug Burgum is also looking to become the next governor of North Dakota. His campaign put out a statement today reading in part, it's, pa part, it's past time our attorney general begins making these issues a top priority. And as governor, I look forward to working with him to address this important statewide crisis. Inexpensive home drug tests have become popular with parents, but are they ex accurate or just cheap? Tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10, what happened when we put these tests to the test? Plus, the warning from experts about their use. Cloudy and rainy in parts of the valley today. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson for a first look at the forecast. Hutch? Andrea, thank you. As we take a look at the sky cam, things are clearing up a bit in the Fargo-Moorhead area. But as we look at the radar, some lightning and thunder showers passing through portions of northwest Minnesota and the northern Red River Valley. Much of this activity is just off to the east of the FM area. The individual cells are moving north. Brief heavy showers is primarily what we're going to experience tonight, not anticipating severe weather. From New Folden all the way up to Hallock on 59, a few showers are taking place there. Down south, uh, excuse me, western Becker County, seeing some thunder showers. Here's a look at your evening planner. Sunset tonight, 902. We'll be dropping into the 60s by then. And all in all, things are looking pretty good. Taking a look at what's going on in Breckenridge, there's a sprinkle off to the east near Pelican Rapids, but there was more weather in Breckenridge today. We're talking weather with first graders. Had a great time out there today, talking about clouds, thunderstorms, and the weather that they produce and how to stay safe. So that was a lot of fun. Thanks for the invitation out there. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. Mm -hmm. The woman who was kicked out of the Garth Brooks concert because she used the men's restroom is being reimbursed by the Fargo Dome after calling our whistleblower hotline. The Fargo Dome sent Samantha Berg this letter with a check for $174, saying they investigated, and although details could not be completely confirmed, they wanted to close the matter by sending her a refund check. Berg is planning to attend a different Garth Brooks concert in Las Vegas around the 4th of July weekend. Tuition rates will drop 1% at Minnesota's two-year public colleges next year, all thanks to legislation that was passed last year, according to the Star Tribune. But officials say the price cut, along with tuition freeze at seven state universities, is putting campuses in a financial bind. Because of this, they're making plans to cut programs and staff. This week, MinSCU, or Minnesota State Colleges and Universities, sent out a preview of next year's budget, which includes those new tuition rates. It says, on average, full-time students will pay nearly $5,000 at 
community and technical colleges. That's $48 less than this year. And at state universities, full-time students will pay just over $7,000, which is the same as this year. Both rates are mandated under a 2015 state law. This is the fourth year in a row that Minnesota's public two-year colleges have either frozen or cut tuition. Minsku, which operates 54 campuses, is slated to receive $673 million in state funds next year. A Fargo woman called our whistleblower hotline after she says she had a scary encounter with an unleashed dog. Unless you're in a pet-friendly park, cities across the valley mandate that dogs and cats be on leashes when you get off your property. As one dog owner told us, you need to expect the unexpected with your four-legged friends. I just never know what she's going to do because um, they're kind of unpredictable. They have different temperaments. They are <laughs> very playful and they are they're basically just humans in dog form. In Fargo, if you're cited for not leashing your pet, fines can start at $50. Now, this story, as we mentioned, came to us through our whistleblower hotline. If you see an issue in your community, here's some advice. Call our hotline at 237-6576 and leave your tip. Two women, one from Fargo and another from Moorhead, are preparing for a competition to find the fittest man and woman on earth. The CrossFit Games is a worldwide sporting event that involves various workouts from weightlifting to gymnastics. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with the women about their journey. Carla Solom and Jessica Grondo are just two of 20 women that will be competing in their region in Columbus, Ohio. The region consists of 11 states. Put it into perspective, Carla and I are two in like 20,000. Um, so that can kind of give a perspective of how rare it is and we're both coming from Fargo, North Dakota. And we're in the same region of like Minneapolis and Chicago. Jessica is the only person from North Dakota competing and Carla is one of two Minnesotans. I've never looked at it that way. Um, I kind of see this as a representation of um, my gym and my community. I, I plan to wear um, a North Dakota shirt and just kind of like give a shout out to everyone in North Dakota. and. Weighted squats, pull-ups, and rope climbing are just a few of the moves the ladies will do. Both have been participating and training in CrossFit for several years. This will be the first time they will compete at this high of a level, which is exciting, but comes with pressure. And I think the biggest thing for me is not wanting to let any of my teammates down or anybody that might be streaming and watching live. Um, but then I have to remember they're just there to support me. About 20 people are planning to travel with the ladies to cheer and support them, but people and businesses in the FM area have been helping them prepare. Both say it will be a challenge, but they are thankful for the opportunity. Have a, a positive mindset the whole time and, and just be grateful to be there. It's all a part of the journey because there isn't really a destination. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Now keep in mind, CrossFit is for people of all ages and abilities, and competition is a small part of it. If you want to learn more, click on this story on valleynewslive.com. Power Players Week on Jeopardy! is nearly over, but one Minnesota lawmaker made the most of his time under the bright lights. Senator Al Franken has long been, Franken, that is, has long been a Jeopardy! fan, but this week he was a power player on stage in front of 1,500 fans and competing against some of the best minds in media, politics, and comedy. Franken was fixed on his competition and felt good about most categories, but not all of them. Anything with popular culture in the last eight years. I've been running for the Senate and in the Senate for that long, and I've paid less attention to popular culture than I did at any time in my life. Senator Franken was the big winner. He came home with $50,000 for the United Services Organization. There's a new yellow Crayola crayon color. Wondrous Wyatt is named after a nine-year-old Moorhead boy who got a big surprise today after winning the contest. Crayola Experience brought coloring to life for a group of elementary school kids who had to keep a secret. Look at this. Wyatt was able to be on a coloring book page through this cool technology. You see, it takes a picture and prints out a picture for you to color. Wyatt's grandma says that he wants to be an artist when he grows up. He looked a little shocked, actually, um, but I think I, I don't think he quite grasped what was going on at first. But how else would you walk in and see an eight-foot crayon? What are you supposed to do? <laughs> because you, as usually you wouldn't see a, a giant crayon on a normal basis. 
Wyatt also won a free trip to the Crayola Experience. That is at the Mall of America, which is expected to be done on Wednesday in Minneapolis. Wondrous Wyatt. That's awesome. That's cool. Okay, this next story, you're going to like this one also, because today is Alan Peterson's birthday. So later on Valley News Live, find out what makes this day and this guy so special. Temperatures hit the 80 degree mark for a few locations up and down the valley today, and we had gusty winds once again. This evening, we have a few showers and thunder showers rumbling through the region. I'll have the latest in your hour by hour forecast next.